What up, what up, what up, what up? It's me, L Teddy 27. Good as night, dude. Right about the hood. Oh, dear God. I'm already eating a drink. Look at damn mess. Just a damn mess. Please oh, no. And yes, me, no. What up, 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 what's good, people? What's up, what's up, what's up? It's me, L Teddy 27 and I am back with yet another review. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be our review for Insecure. It is season five. It is episode six. It is entitled Tired. Okay. Yeah. Bitches are tired, honey. Tired and fatigue. Okay. Tired and fatigue. Anyway. So, get my notes here. Um... So we got, um, we got Issa is, um, daydreaming, you know, when she saw, um, when she saw Caligula, um, and, um, Lawrence in the hospital, she goes into this daydream trance. Child, <laughs> the way she, <laughs> the way she took that baby, Mustafa, Mustafa, and, you know, threw him like a basketball through the hoop. And then kick the shit out of um, Candy Core. Talk about fuck them kids. It was funny at first, but then I was like, girl, you didn't have to do coconut oil like that. But it was funny. <laughs> anyway, so then she wakes up and she's looking at social media. Girl, come to find out, Lawrence don't move back to LA. Y'all see the setup, right? Y'all see what we're doing, right? A mess. I already told y'all this was going to be a whole fucking shit show with this Nathan Lawrence situation, but whatever. Lawrence don't move back to L.A. She didn't even find out from him. She found out in social media. A mess. So, Issa um, and Strugglebeard, <clears throat> Nathan, are fucking, and she's trying to get him to say, I love you. Hey, bitch. Hey, whore. These three words are not what you're going to get while you're getting your back blown out. When a bitch is blowing your back out, the last thing they are thinking about is these three words. No. No, girl. No, 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 no. Motherfucker, no. Mm-mm. Girl, let that go. Anyway, um, so that happened. She just kept, then there was a point where she laying on his chest and she was, you know, playing on his, around his nipples and areolas and trying to be all lovey-dovey and get him to say, I love you. But I told y'all last week, they was doing too much. She was doing too much. She be all over the fucking place. I did find it funny. The whole coyote is a bad. Because you know white people do be doing stupid shit like that. Have a whole ass fucking coyote. And then get surprised because your pet coyote demolished your two-year-old child to death. A mess. Anyway, Molly at a work retreat. While Molly at the work retreat, she got Issa on family duty. Seeing that her brothers and everything. Her cute brother. You know, Molly brothers cute. Hell, she got some cute brothers. Um, got, you know, they food and her daddy got food and stuff like that. Make sure she take care of them. Issa told him, told her, stop trying to hit on her brother because he married and got a child. And then going to throw in there. Curtis got herpes. I was like, oh, <laughs> she said Curtis has herpes. I said, oh, girl, you better be putting his, girl, you better be putting his diseases out there. Better be giving him herpes simplex. Girl, what's the little, what's the medicine they use? Is it a Breva, Valtrex? So one of them herpes medications. Like, I don't know, child. One of them that you hear the commercials on, child. Well, they got 8,394 side effects. Anyway, Issa tries to get a new client um, or whatnot, and that blew up in her face because Chris Sean and Hashtag did their damage with all of that. And mm, mm. But my thing about it is, is this. If you're a startup company like them, at the end of the day, and what Issa probably could have sold them on is, you can say what you want to say, but remember, Crenshaw wasn't getting that opportunity by himself. Someone at least had to get him in the door. Even if he ended up being upset with me about what happened and um, what he thought I did or did not do, at the end of the day, the exposure he has is only because of the opportunity that I was able to land for him. We'll get to that in a little bit. So, Molly, still at the retreat. Child, Molly done got way too drunk. Molly done got drunk as for way too drunk. Drunk is all get out, honey. She did, girl, you don't get that drunk at the work retreat, honey. Girl, she out here pop locking and dropping, twerking and dancing, you know, toot that thing up, mommy, make it roll, make it roll. What time is it, Molly time? Until the man watching this shit, thought she had them booked, got put down, by him, thought he had them beat her boxing. He had to tell her, no, no, I like a chick that wears a good weave, okay? 
girl, you got a whole low cut. Well, not really a low cut. It's kind of like a fade or whatever. But girl, we don't get into that. Anyway, <laughs> she was a mess. Just a damn mess. You do not want to be the workplace you're drunk. Okay, you don't want to be that. Girl, you are the one who they're going to be telling. Girl, you see mom had a whole video of you. And you think that video ain't going to make its way to the inbox of everybody down to the job? Girl, they just waiting to unload um that piece of ammo on you next time you say something out of the way. Child girl. Did anybody notice the other little um the other newbie was that was with her that was sitting on the couch when they was at the little bar the night before was sitting? He was real cute. So I'm just saying. Anyway, I got into him. Anyway, um um Issa then goes to Chris Sean. And she brought these brownies. And I was like, bad move, Issa. Because if I'm going to you to talk to you about what the fuck you got going on, bitch, I ain't bringing you no motherfucking brownie. Bitch, that's a sign of weakness. That means you going in there already looking for them to forgive you or big them or looking like you done did something wrong. And child, girl, no, ma'am. It was a sign of weakness when she brought the brownie. Anyway, Crenshaw embodied her, honey. Baby, she came in there, tried to be nice and dot, dot, dot. And then she was, you know, laughing and joking. And then when she did try to be serious, he still wasn't trying to hear her. Baby, he bodied her. No parts of her. It was a mess. Um, I still quiet as a skeptic. Don't know what Issa did wrong. But that's a whole nother story. I, I really don't. Maybe maybe she, maybe she, I missed the part last week or week before last when she said something to him out of pocket. Um. In the DMs. Y'all put it in the comment section. Because I really want to know what did I miss that she did that was so wrong to Karen Sean. But whatever. Down to the barbershop. Um, Struggle Beard. Um, what happened with Struggle Beard? One of the fellow barbers was like habitually late for work. And so one day he'd be like real late. And one of his clients would be like, listen, I need a motherfucking haircut. Can somebody cut my goddamn hair so I can go my black ass the fuck home? Listen. Barbershops do be like that. Like, don't end up having a barber that's always late. Like, you already know you're going to be in a barbershop for a while, longer than you want to. And so then, if you got a barber that's just like, really? Like, child, that should have pissed me off, too. Whatever. I done been there, did that, done that. I get rid of a barber real fast. Like, mm -mm. you don't got a monopoly on cutting hair. It's somebody else can cut hair just as good as you, if not better. Girl, bye. Anyway. So, Nathan took the guy. And so, the barber who um, Nathan took his client. That barber got mad and all of this that blows up at Nathan or whatever. But the other barbers was on his side, but they weren't really supporting Nathan like that. They just let Nathan, Nathan kind of hang out there a little, you know, just hang out there. He started going in on Nathan and calling him bipolar and things like that. I mean, it was really trying. It really started to, ah, good, ah, good. It's, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit at the end, but it, it went back to me of how people have always talked about how Issa and Natasha Rothwell, they don't write well for black, not black, I should say, but for male characters. They don't write well for their male characters at all. And it just came through so much this episode. Like the way they wrote Nathan's character throughout this. The way they wrote the scene at the barbershop. That was kind of like, mm, I don't know if that would have kind of quite went like. Like you got to have a, a male in the room that when you write something, you know you're not a male. You can be, They can say, yeah, you might want to change this or change that. It's kind of like how... You don't want a room of only white people writing for black people because you are not black and you have never and will never live the black experience. And the same thing with the male. And I could never just only write for female characters because I'm not female. There are things that female will be able to say, yeah, that's not how they would really go. That's not from a female perspective. In the same vein, with male characters, I noticed that. And I understand that in, um, in, 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 in in fiction and things like that, you have to have protagonists and antagonists and so forth. Uh, but the way it's written in a show that is in a lot of ways realistic, sometimes more often than not, the way the male characters are written is just not realistic. And even if they try to be realistic, they never really give it to you really, truly and authentically from that male side or the male point of view. And a lot of times what we as men do we ought to, we, we kind of get what they're going for and we just give them passes on certain things. But now we're at the end. I ain't giving you no more passes. And it's just a lot of times poorly written male um, parts there. Anyway, I know I took a long way around that explanation. Anyway, so, and I think with Nathan, when they got into this argument, they started to argue. Ah, I think Nathan was both triggered, but more so probably embarrassed that, okay, even if he knew or did not know that Nathan was really bipolar or had mental issues, 
it not only triggered him, but it embarrassed him that now you got to put all my business out there on front street. So I kind of felt that way. We Molly's still down here to the um retreat at work, and she has this big presentation. And while that's going on, her brother keeps blowing up her phone, blowing up her phone, and of course she's thinking it's something from her mom, and she just she bombs. I mean, she craps her pants all over that goddamn presentation. I mean, she just really crapped her pants like she bombed it. It was not good. And so come later on, after everything's done, she ends up having to tell her boss or whatnot and say, "Listen." This is what's going on with me. And she tells him everything that's going on with her mom and everything and stuff like that. So he was like, listen, we you got to tell us these things so I know, you know, what you're going through and I can we can help out and stuff like that. So and I thought she should, you know, if you got something that's serious that's going on and it's going to affect your performance at work, that's the first thing you do. You go to your boss or whatever. Hey, let me talk to you. I got this going on. So if I'm not my regular self, just know I got this going on and they will understand. You can't just take it by yourself. But that's just I thought that was just normal for people to do anyway. Issa has another daydream child. Child. She's still having these daydreams or whatever. As child. Um <laughs> Coke bottles as um rose up on her at this um restaurant. You know, I guess it was a food truck or something like that. Baby. Baby. <laughs> Baby, when I tell you, Mama went ill, uh, Issa and told her, yeah, I got a real ring, and he's making a million dollars, and here's the body got me, where she was like, and his dick grew to two extra inches, so that long stroke that you always got liked is even longer. I was like, ooh, a long stroke? Ooh. I was here for it. I was here for it. <laughs> Anyway, so anyway, so the Coco Dorm is uh you know kicking Issa into a pile of trash. It was real funny though. It was real funny though. Anyway, she knocked Issa out. And, you know that was it was a whole little daydream or whatever. It was cute. It was cute. Molly's mom. We found out Molly's mom wakes up because Molly's brother um FaceTimed her and she saw that her mom woke up. Her mom still can't talk, but at least her mom is awake and her eyes are open and things like that. And so we're real happy about that. So then we back at Issa uh, at Strugglebeard's house. So Issa and Strugglebeard are talking. And it just goes. And this was like another scene where just the male character is just poorly written. Just very badly written. Poorly doesn't even begin to describe. It's just horribly written. So they're both at home commiserating about awful shit going on at work. Issa with the Chris Sean situation. Uh, Strugglebeard with the other barber and everything. So then Issa goes into this whole thing, trying to pressure him into telling her these three words. I ain't gonna want a part of it. Because you can't force somebody to say I love you if they're not there yet. And then you started this off saying we're gonna take this. So I was with because later on he went into her and said, Girl, in one moment you crying in my mouth, the next moment you want to be with me, then the next moment you say you want to take it slow, and then the next moment you said I love you. Girl, get it together. But I told y'all Issa is toxic. She's a whole fucking train wreck. She's toxic as, as fuck. So, because in one of the, in his ranting and going on, he was like, man, I just don't know if LA is good for me. So she's triggered thinking that he's going to go back to how he did before when he goes to her and went back to Houston and Dallas or wherever the fuck he went. She's thinking that's going to happen. And then he called her out, like I said, for all of her erratic behaviors and stuff like that. And all of her erratic feelings and stuff like that, just all over the place. And then they just settled in on they were like, well, let's just drop it. And I didn't know if they would like just drop the conversation or let's just drop this whole relationship because it just went off from that. They ended up sitting on the couch on opposite sides of the couch like, girl, that's it. So I don't know if they're like, um, let's just drop this conversation or let's just drop this whole relationship. But anyway, it went off from there. Listen. I want to know, is it Princess Penny or who, what, who is in the writer's room that has a twig and berries? Because... Either they're not speaking up enough about how they're writing some of these male characters or there's just no one there in the writer's room with the Twig and Marys. I don't know. But, and it's something that's been said from season one, but and we kind of overlooked it and given it, given it a pass for so long because we really enjoyed the show, but it, you know, we are there now, so might as well call it out. They got to do better because all of the male characters this week were just not written well. And I, I did not enjoy it. Y'all let, let me know what y'all think. Y'all get in the comment section. Maybe I'm just sitting way off and way wrong with y'all. Let me know. I don't know. Let's see what y'all say.
I see y'all in the comment section, but we gonna argue about what we saw, okay? Until next time, that's all I got for y'all. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all drive safely. I'm out.